What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk everything about curves and how they work inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing to be aware of when you're working with curves inside of Blender is they're a different kind of geometry than meshes. And so basically what that means is if you do a shift day, Notice how we, like we always add meshes, right? Like cylinders and cones and things like that and then kind of edit them. Um, so those are pretty much fixed shapes. So for example, this cube basically gets set with fixed points on the corners, right? And then you've got edges connecting the different vertices, making up the different faces, other things like that. And those adjust as you move them around. So the curves are a little bit different in the sense that when you add a curve object, so if you do a shift A and you go down to a curve object right here, and let's say we were to add just this simple uh, Bezier curve right here, but if we were to tab in edit mode on this one, notice how what it's doing is it's kind of using like a mathematical function in order to basically set the way that um, the, way that the line between these different points um, is created. Right, so, and it's affected by things like these control points. If I move them around or I rotate them, then notice how that curve is changing along with that. If I was to come in here and extrude something else, so if I was to do an E to extrude like this, notice how I'm not getting a straight edge in here. What I'm getting instead is I'm getting a new control point and then the math is kind of setting the way that the curve moves through these points. So they're a little bit different than meshes inside of Blender. But now let's talk a little bit about how we can create and move around curves. All right, so first off, when you want to add a curve, you're usually going to do a shift A and you're going to add a curve object. Notice how right now I have a few options in here for things like the Bezier or the circle as well as the path. There's other options in here as well. There's actually also an add-on built into Blender that adds more kinds of curves that you can add in here as well. But for now, let's just focus on what's contained in here. So let's add a simple Bezier curve right here. And so when you look at this, notice that what it does is it just adds a curve object in here. And if you look over in your scene collection right here, notice how it has a different icon in here than your meshes, right? Your meshes have a little triangle. This indicates that this is a curve. So you can see how it's a different kind of object. But from there, let's say that we wanted to create our own curve. So there's a few different ways that we could do that, right? So this comes in with a curve that looks like this. Well, what we can do, and I usually go to a top down mode so that this isn't adding points up and down inside of the 3D space. But the first thing we can do is we can tab into edit mode. And so when we tab into edit mode, notice that you get these little like control lines in here that are setting where your objects go. And so first off, when you select, notice how you can select the different points on this curve in order to edit these control points. And so notice how, for example, if I was to select this and tap G and move this around, notice how the curve is going to adjust and move around with it. So I could do the same thing with this one right here. And so that's gonna allow me to set the point at which the control point is located. But notice how we also have these points on the end. Well, if we move the points around on the end, so if I select this and then I use the move tool to move it around, or you could also select all three and rotate them. Notice how that's changing the way the curve acts inside of Blender. And so not only can you rotate this and move it, you can also scale it. Notice how when you scale it, the curve effect that's in here is actually gonna get more or less pronounced. So you can use this in order to really adjust the way that your curves act inside of Blender. So for example, I could come in here and I could make this curve have more up and down by scaling this up and down. You can also add to your curve by tapping the E key and extruding a new point. So if I extrude this point out here, um, notice how I can use this in order to add to my curve really quickly. So I can just tap E to extrude, and then the more control points that I extrude, the longer my curve is going to be. And notice how for each one of these, you can come in here and you can adjust the rotation and scale of the control points that are in here. So one thing to be aware of is these do work in a 3D space. So right now, when I'm in a top-down view, then these are all gonna get placed on the same Z plane, right? But let's say that I was to rotate around like this and then tap the E key, and then click in a few different places, and then look at this from like a front on view like this. Well, notice how now this curve is actually moving up and down as well as like left and right. 
So it's not only on the X and Y axes, it's also on the Z axis. And so you can use that for a lot of different things, um, but you just need to be aware of it. If you want something to be totally flat, usually the best way to do that is gonna be to work on that from top down mode like this. And so I'm gonna tab back into object mode and let's add a new curve. So I'm gonna move my 3D cursor over here by doing a shift right click and then I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a new curve. And it's gonna be a Bezier curve again. Well, this time what I wanna do is instead of working with the control points that are contained inside of this curve, what I wanna do instead is I wanna create my own using the draw tool. And so the draw tool is gonna to basically allow you to click and drag on the surface. Um, and then Blender will, based on what you draw, kind of extrapolate where a curve might go inside of Blender. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the vertices in this curve. So I'm gonna tap A and then I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna do a delete vertices. So when I delete vertices, notice how I have a curve object that's in here, but it doesn't actually have any control points associated with it. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna click on this draw function right here, and then I wanna click and drag. And so if I click and drag like this, Watch what this is gonna do. This is going to create a curve and it's gonna kind of extrapolate where the control points of that curve might go. And so notice how you can adjust the number of control points in here by adjusting the error value on this little slider right here. So the lower the error value, the more control points this is going to add, but the more um, the more detailed your curve is going to be. Usually I like to bump this up a little bit because notice how my curve is getting smoother um, as I bump my error up like this. So you can use this in order to quickly add curves into your scene. And so we'll talk more about this in a second because we can use it to also quickly add curves that like go over objects. But before I wanna do that, so what I, what I wanna look at now is you can use the curves in order to generate 3D geometry. And I'm gonna go back to select mode right here. But the way that you can do that is by selecting your curve and going into edit mode. And then if you jump over here into the object data properties, there's actually functions in here that you can use in order to generate geometry on this surface or on this curve. And so for example, what we wanna do is we wanna click on this and then we wanna go down into geometry. Well, notice how there's an option in here for bevel. And so notice how if I bump the bevel value up just a little bit, this is actually going to add a curve that, or this is going to add a um, like a pipe that follows along this. It's basically taking a circle and it's running it along this curve. And so notice how you can use this in order to add a different size of curve like this, you can also adjust the resolution right here in order to make a smooth or not smooth um, cylinder. So for example, if you were creating like some flat pipes or something like that, um, what you might think about doing is you might think about bumping that down so that you're not generating a lot of geometry in here. So notice how if we were to look at this in a wireframe, the lower that resolution is, the less geometry we're creating inside of our scene. And so there's also an option here to fill the caps, meaning what it's gonna do is it's gonna close this curve off. And one of the cool things about this is this is actually live. So if we were to go into a top-down view and select like one of the control points, for example, notice how this curve is actually following along, um, or this uh, cylinder is actually following along with our curve inside of Blender. And so what that means is that means you can use this to create things like pipes or wires or other things like that really easily. And so one of the really powerful things about the curve function is not only does it have the ability to add the bevel right here, which you can use in order to quickly add pipes, it can also add objects um, in order to create custom profiles that follow a path. And so the way that works is basically you click on the option for object right here. And so what you do is you select another curve object, like a profile, um, which it can then use in order to kind of extrude it along this path. And so what I have here is I have two objects that I've drawn. So the first is a mesh object right here. So it's just a plane with a face in it. So notice how if I select this curve and then I try to select an object by clicking on this right here, notice how nothing happens. So the reason for that is because this only works with curve data. And so what I've done, and I'll just do it again, is I've just duplicated this off to the side, and then I tab into edit mode, and I want to select this face, 
tap the X key and get rid of the face. So what that leaves me with is that leaves me with just a series of edges in here. Well, with the series of edges, you can actually convert this object by going to add or by going to object convert, you can convert this to a curve. Well, once you convert this to a curve, notice how this curve shows up over here. Well, now our path can actually read that curve using the bevel object function and use it to generate a profile along this path using that curve. And so one of the really cool things about this is now if I tab into this, I can still edit the curve that's in here. So that profile is gonna move along with the curve like this, and it's actively using the data in this curve in order to do that. So you can use this to really quickly create different profiles that follow along paths like wood base or other things like that. And so there are some other functions in here that you can use. So for example, if you select some points, you can actually right click and notice how there's actually a context menu that's gonna pop up. So that's gonna give you a bunch of functions in here for different things you can do. So um, one of the things you can do is if you wanna add points in between these right here, you can right click and click on the option for subdivide. Notice how when we subdivided it, not only did it add points in here, but you also got some additional geometric detail that's uh, placed along this surface. So you can use that in order to subdivide. Let's say you wanted to take the end here and remove it you could right click and there's an option in here for split. So if you click on split and then move this off to the side, notice how this is now acting as a completely different curve. So notice how I can extrude off of this and it's no longer a function or a piece of this curve over here anymore. So that's something to be aware of. Right, so another tool you might find useful is there's also a function and I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. But there's also a function in here called make cyclic. And so what that is going to do is if we select it, so if we right click on this and we click on the option for toggle cyclic, what that's gonna do is that's basically gonna close in your curve so that it's a complete closed curve between your start and end points. So notice what that did is that basically added um, a closure piece from here to here and you can toggle that on and off just by right clicking and clicking the toggle cyclic function in here so you can use this in order to quickly create closed shapes if you need those inside of blender so you can also dissolve vertices so remember how we created this vertex in here um, by subdividing well, you can also right click and click on the button to dissolve vertices and what that's going to do is that's going to remove um, whatever vertices you have selected in here and then it's just going to kind of like uh, create it'll just fill it in between the next control points in here and so what i might do if i wanted those back is just right click and do a subdivide in order to add those back in here so let's say i wanted another i could just select these two right click and subdivide. And the cool thing about that is it's only subdividing between those two points. It's not subdividing this whole thing. It's only subdividing between the points you have selected. So, so there's a bunch of other options in here as well, which we're not gonna worry too much about for right now. But one other thing that you should know about is currently the way that we're adding this in here doesn't really interact with objects inside of Blender, right? So for example, if I was to add a new curve, so I'm just gonna do a shift A, Bezier curve. We'll just tab in here and delete the vertices like we did before. Well, now if we use the draw function in here, we'll notice how what that's gonna do is even if I draw over these objects, it's not gonna interact with them in any way, right? Like what it's doing is it's using the 3D cursor in order to set the depth of the curve that you're creating. Well, what you can do with the tool active, so notice how I'm in edit mode, I'm in draw mode. If I tap the N key and you go to tool, there's an option here for active tool that you can use in order to adjust the depth of the line that's created in here. There's a few other things as well, but we're gonna focus specifically on the depth. And so if I set that to surface and I draw across this, notice what it's gonna do is instead of just drawing it in the 3D space, it's actually going to use those objects to figure out where your curve should go. So notice how those points are now being placed based on that. Well, one of the cool things about that is, well then you can come down and you can set your depth to your object and you can use this in order to really quickly create things like wires or other things like that. Notice how when you have this set with a depth right here, it's gonna actually show you what the width of that wire is. But notice how I can use this in order to quickly drape curves 
over these objects really quickly. And also notice how this is interacting with the other curves in here too. So this is a really fast way to add wires and ropes and other things like that inside a blender using curves. So there's some other things that you can mess around with in here like your tolerance, um, which is gonna give you different results, but we're gonna leave this kind of as is for right now. And so one other thing to be aware of is when you do create objects in 3D like this, um, right now it's still a curve object, right? So if I tab in here and I adjust any of this, um, it's going to adjust around, but you might have some problems like UV mapping and other things like that. So you can't select like the individual faces in here, for example. So if you get to the point where you're done with your curve, like you've got the shape that you want, well, what you can do is you can take a curve object like this one and you can go into object in your object mode and there's an option for convert to mesh. And so what we can do is we can take this curve that we've created, we can do a convert to mesh. When I do that, now, notice how if I tab in here, I can actually select the individual faces and actually edit this like a real mesh rather than a curve. So be careful with that because once you take something and you convert it to a mesh, um, if you try to convert it back to a curve, notice how you're just gonna get a really weird result like this. So do be careful, like for me, for example, what I did is I duplicated this and then I converted it. That way when it's a mesh, if I need to go back and re-edit it, I can do that using this over here. So um, you may lose some of that functionality so be careful when you do it, but that will then give you control over being able to apply like different materials to different faces and other things like that. So I will also link to a video on this page about how you can use the curve modifier in order to take non-curve objects and bend them along a curve. That's another really powerful way to use curves in Blender. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you had any questions, anything like that. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.